The next test that I'm going to demonstrate is proprioception of the arm and hand. And we'll do the proprioception of the arm, including the shoulder, elbow, and a little bit of the wrist first, and then we'll do the hand and fingers. When you're doing this in your competency, you'll uh, either demonstrate the arm or you'll demonstrate the hand. But for the purposes of this video, we'll, we'll do both and put them together because it's the same skill. Let's assume that hands have been washed, everything has been set up, you've um, welcomed your client, they're comfortable, all of that has already happened. And so we're gonna take up when the client is actually, uh, we're explaining how to do the test and then doing the test. Now with this test, there's actually two different protocols. So I'll do the first one, then I'll do the second one. The first one, is when the client has movement on both sides of the body, okay? So to date, Maddie has been acting as a client who has right side paralysis. Now, she doesn't have paralysis anymore. So that's the first one. Then she's gonna redevelop her paralysis <laughs> and, um, and we'll do the second technique. So just remember, there's two techniques. First one, if the client can move both sides of the body. Second one, if they can't and I will ask you to demonstrate both techniques, so please learn both equally well. All right. Maddie, this next test is called proprioception, and proprioception is one of our senses, and it lets us know where our body is in space, so is my arm out or is my arm down? Uh, how far do I need to reach for things? How um, strongly do I need to grasp things like maybe a, a paper cup or something like that. And it's one of those senses that you don't notice if it's working well, but if it's not, it really impacts your motor ability. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be um, looking at the pro sense of proprioception in your arms, and then we'll also look in your at your hands and your wrists. Um, because you can move both sides of your body, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hold one side of your body and move in various different directions, and you will mirror it on the other side. Okay. okay. Any questions about proprioception or the test? No. Okay. So I'm going to um, just hold your body in as much as possible if you can just let your arm be heavy and let me do okay. the moving. And it doesn't matter whether you move at the same pace as me or not. You can move after I do. You can move at the same time, okay? okay? Oh, you're doing a great job of letting your arm be heavy. Excellent. All right, y'all. Uh, life is not perfect and neither am I. So. <laughs> I should have asked Maddie to close her eyes when we were doing the test on, on both sides of her body as you're seeing now on the screen. We always want to have the client close their eyes when we're actually doing the test so that they're, they're not using their vision to tell where their body is in space. Um, apologies for the oversight and you get the idea. Okay, and go ahead and relax. All right, that was great. Now we're gonna do a different technique. Um, say that you're, um, you can't move one side of your body, and so I'm gonna move um, your both sides of your body in turn, and then you will um, tell me what direction you're, you're moving in, and I'll explain how that works. Okay. So Again, if a person can't move one side of their body, you're going to demonstrate on the side that is unaffected first. So now we're back to Maddie is paralyzed on her right side. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna show you on the right side. You would do the left side first, so please don't get confused. Always do the left side first, but you don't wanna see the back of me and nothing of her. So we're gonna look at how you would do the right side and please know that you would do the unaffected side first, then the other side, and you always, always do both sides. Okay. Now, one of the things about this test, I know that I'm supposed to just demo, but one of the things about this test is that I started off here 
and then I moved around so that I could be in a better position. When you're doing this test, a very common thing that, um, that beginner testers do is we stay in one position and then we try to manipulate and it's very awkward and it doesn't work well. Because we're moving the arm all the way out to the side and all the way in, if we had a table, which we could have, we would wanna move the client far enough away from it. We would wanna give ourselves room to be comfortable and also the client to be comfortable so they didn't bang into anything. And we could also move around freely. All right, starting the test. So you know what proprioception is, mm -hmm. we went through that, and this is technique two. Now, Maddie, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be moving your arm, and what you're gonna tell me is what direction I'm moving in. Okay. So we're gonna call this up, okay. this down, mm -hmm. this in, and this out. Okay. Okay, so let's just practice that before, um, before we do it. Okay. So, this direction is up, up, down, down, in, out, out, down, down. Great. Yeah, there's there's a little confusion of whether that is down or, down or, in. or in. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, but you get the idea, mm -hmm. yes? Okay, so now I'm going to have you close your eyes and we're going to okay. do the same thing. Okay. okay. Down, in, up, 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 down, down, in, in, out, down, down, up, 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 down. All right, great. So that's proprioception of the wrist and hand. As I said earlier in the intro video, it's impossible to do this with, um, with a file folder because both of my hands are, are busy. So Maddie is gonna need to close her eyes for this test. So you'll want to do this a little bit later on so you know that the client feels comfortable with you and comfortable with closing their eyes. In a minute, I'm gonna demonstrate how proprioception of the wrist and hand works. So stay tuned. All right, we're back. And now we're gonna demonstrate what it's like to do proprioception of the hand and wrist. Now, as I said, with the probe of the shoulder and arm, we're gonna do both sides. So I'm gonna demo both sides for you. Same thing. And uh, Maddie, are you comfortable and your arms in a good position? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to um, stabilize her, her wrist and I'm gonna have you, uh, well, we'll first do it with your eyes open and then eyes closed. So um, this is up, okay. this is down, in, and out. Okay. Okay, so what is this? Up. Great. Down. And what about this? In, out. And? In, oh, up. Great, excellent, <laughs> Down. okay, excellent. So now I'm gonna have you close your eyes. Okay. I'm gonna test both sides okay. and um, then we'll be done. Perfect. Okay. Up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, in, out, in, out, up, down. Okay, and now we're going to do the other side. Eyes closed. Perfect. Thank you. Up, up, down, in, out. Down, down, up, down, up, in, out. And good job, thanks. Mm -hmm. Some notes for the proprioception. 
when we perform the proprioceptive test, we want to be very careful not to give additional input or information that would help the client identify which direction they're moving in. And so to that end, if I could just have you um, put your arm out, we are going to um, hold the client's body part, and I'll demonstrate on all of them, um, from the sides, right? So when I lift up, you can actually see that I'm not grasping her, her arm like this, right? I've got some space. So by holding the sides of the body part, we give as little extra information as possible. Now, we're going to do this with every part of the upper extremity that we test. Um, the fingers will grasp on the sides. Let me show you on index finger, grasp on the sides, thumb, I'm on the side of the wrist. When we're doing the upper extremity, uh, we may need to use two hands in order to stabilize the body part and also make the client feel comfortable and like they're not having to hold their arm up in the air. So although um, it's a, a larger space, I'm still going to grasp on the medial and lateral side and when we lift her arm up, this is a little awkward, you can still see that space in there. Same thing at the elbow. If I'm with the um, forearm, same thing. And you can see that I'm using both hands. So I am at her wrist and at her forearm. Um, here, I'm at her elbow and her upper arm. And it, it'll be the same no matter what. So I'd love for you to practice holding body parts by the sides instead of full hand contact. Now, full hand contact is obviously much more comfortable, but if I'm asking her which is up, for example, and I'm giving her pressure in the up direction, it kind of defeats the purpose of the test. Another thing that comes up sometimes, especially for students that are new to testing, is say that you're moving um, the arm, and then you want to go to the elbow, right? So, uh, I can shift my grip and still I'm lateral and then I can move the elbow. Say I want to go back to the upper arm, what am I going to do? Well, I can hold here laterally. I can move my hand, move my hand, right? So it's not a matter of your hands are in one place and you have to keep them there for the whole time. You can actually shift your grip around just moving slowly and methodically. Um, this one tends to create tension in students' <laughs> brains, uh, move slowly and methodically, and you can adjust your grip however you need to. And you want to keep that grip on the sides. Now, the other thing that sometimes happens, um, and uh, this is kind of unpleasant, so I won't actually do it, is that people who are nervous and are doing tests dig in, right? So you want to check yourself and be sure that you're using a firm grasp, but not um, a, a death grip, okay? Other than that, things that I did were um, I mixed up when I was going up, down, in, out. Sometimes I went up, 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 and then down. So I'm mixing it all up again so that the client doesn't get a sense that, oh, first we go up, then we go down, then we go up, then we go down, right? So we want them to actually be reporting what they experience rather than what they think comes next. And that's important for the validity of the test. Other than that, this one is most easily uh, mastered by practicing a lot. And, you know, just to acknowledge that, like, I'm much closer to her than I am with light touch, right? So practicing being close and being in relationship with another person's body and being comfortable with that um, as you as the therapist is an important skill to develop. And that will be developed throughout the program because so many of the skills that we practice, we actually need to be in relationship to the client and their body. Good luck with your practice and please come to class with any questions you have. <laughs>